Hello, I'm Mark from GeoCode Tutor, and I'm here today with Practical Machinist to talk about Geo2 and Geo3 radius programming on our CNC machines. Okay, so before we get started, we need to clean up the anti or counterclockwise argument. So I use anti-clockwise to describe the uh, counterclockwise movements in my courses, and that's because that's the English version. Now, the American version is counterclockwise, so bear that in mind as you watch this course. So I'm saying anti because I'm English. Okay, so let's have a look at the GO2 clockwise radius. So if we're going to cut this radius here, we're going to be moving 40 millimeters till the beginning of the radius. And then we have our 10 mil radius, and then we'll be moving 40 millimeters from that center point to the radius away. So let's have a look at a short program on how we're going to do this. So we're going to start off with GO2. Now remember, there is a big chunk of program before these lines. This is not the complete program. This is just a snippet. So we're going to start off with GO2. That's our clockwise radius direction. And we're moving up in Y. So we're moving up to the end point of the radius, Y50. And then we add our 10 mil radius by giving an R value. So it's going to produce a 50 mil straight line with a 10 mil radius at the end. And of course we have to give a feed rate because GO2 acts like GO1 and that it won't work unless we have a feed rate active. Now we don't need to apply this to every line. Okay, so with our GO2 line written, we would then move away from the radius by using GO1 and then an X dimension to move away. So GO1, the straight line move, we don't need to add a feed rate again to that because it's still active from the line above. And this works exactly the same in our counterclockwise direction or anti-clockwise. So the formula and the program would be the same, but if we're going the other way, we would use GO3. So that's the basics of programming a radius, but we can add a lot more information to our part if needed. We can use i, j, and k values to designate the center point of our radius. Now, this gives us a lot more control because it's fine if we are doing normal radiuses like this, but when we move on to compound radiuses, we're gonna to need to know those center points and more about that later. So when we're programming with i, j, and k, our program would look like this. First, I would move to the start position of the radius, and then I would use GO1 for this. So GO1 Y40 takes us to that start position of the radius. Now remember, although it's a 50 mil cut, we have a 10 mil radius. And we also have to give a feed rate here. So once we've programmed that, we can then program our GO2 line. So I like to start our GO2 from the start of the rad here. So GO2 X10 Y50. So this X10, Y50, this is the last position of the radius. So if we take our center points of the radius and then go straight up in Y, we can see our last point there. So this is the end point of the radius that we program with GO2. Now we have I and J there. So Y, our cutter is at the start point of the radius. The I value is the X distance from the center of the radius from the position of our cutter. So this is incremental and our points in our circles, our center of our radius, is all taken incrementally. Now this is normally set in the parameters of the machine. Your machine might not, because you can set it to absolute also, so be aware of that. So our I position is our X axis from the last known position of our tool to the center of our radius, and the J is our Y axis. Now because our cutter is in line with that center point of the radius, our J axis would be zero. So once we've performed our radius, once we've cut around our 10 mil rad there, we then need to move away in X. So we're doing that again with GO1 and an X dimension. Now again, we don't need to add a feed rate because the feed rate is still active from the first line. And of course, that works the same counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. It's exactly the same when using GO3, it's just the other direction. Now there is a third way we can cut a radius. And this is not that known, and it's not as common as the other ways, but you might find, you might use this in your shop. Now, not all controls do radiuses this way, so be aware this might not work on your machine, but it generally tends to work on most planet controls. And that's the f using a radius while using GO1 and not GO2 or GO3. 
So by using a radius in geo one, it would look like this. We would move geo one y50, which is the final position of our straight line move. And then we just add a radius at the end of that straight line move. Now you'll notice there, I've got a comma before the R value. Now that's really important. So adding that comma allows us to turn a radius using geo one. Now it does work if we don't add the comma, but it doesn't produce a correct radius because it messes up with cutter compensation and various other things. So we have to put that comma before. And as usual, we would issue a feed rate. Then once the radius has been cut, we would move away by using an X or Y value there. So why do we need to use I, J and K when, when we can just use an R value? Well, when we're programming a part like this, we would use, we could, we could use R values for sure, um, but using I, J and K allows us to pinpoint those center positions of the arc. Now on two radiuses such as this, we can get away with just using GO2 and an R value or GO3. But if we're using the compound radius such as this, then we can't because those radiuses are not for the full 90 degree radiuses. There is a tangential meeting point in the middle. So when we come to do compound radiuses, i.e. radiuses that blend together, we need to use I, J and K to get those smooth contours there. So the next problem is when we're doing compound radiuses, it's knowing how to find that intersection point between the two radiuses. Well, luckily for us, I have a full series of math courses over on my website that teaches techniques exactly like this. It teaches the maths we need to know to program G-code. So our intersection line would be a tangent between those two radiuses. And um, that runs from center point to center point. So if we draw an imaginary line between the two center points of our radiuses, we find our intersection point. And then we can solve that by using trigonometry. We can draw our right angle triangles within there and work out those distances. So by solving it using trigonometry, we can work out that the intersection point is x8, y33. So that's the exact intersection point of our two radiuses there. So when we're programming now, we know that intersection point. So our cutter would come up using GO1 to the start position of our first radius. So we're coming up in Y20 there to that start position. And then we're going to use GO2 to perform our first radius there. So we know the end position because that's the intersection points that we just solved using trigonometry. So X and Y positions there is the same as our intersection points. It's the end point of that radius. And we're using I and J to designate the center point of that first radius there. So our second radius is counterclockwise or anticlockwise. So we're using GO3. And then we know our X and Y positions from that, from our drawing. We know the end point is 46 millimeters, for example. And because of the size of the radius there from our origin point, we know the X is 15. Now, because our start point was in between those two radiuses, our center position of our second radius is gonna look a little bit different. Our I value is a minus value, for example, and it's only eight millimeters. And our J value is 13. So it's only 13 millimeters above the start point of our cutter. Now we know this because of our X and Y intersection points, and we can calculate these points from that. So finally, once the second radius is done, we just need to move away in Y, and we use GA1 for that. And as you can see, I've only, again, used one feed rate through all of this. But we can change the feed rates if you're not getting a good surface finish or we're getting chattering or whatever. We can change those feed rates as we go into the arc and radius cutting. So when we're doing compound radiuses, we're much more likely to use I, J and K to calculate those points than we would do when we're doing normal 90 degree corner rads. When we're doing 90 degree corner radiuses, we tend to just use an R value. So if you want to learn more about CNC programming, this lesson is part of my foundation course where I teach the basics of G-code programming before we move on to the more advanced courses. So for more information on what I offer as far as training, pop over to my website at gcodetutor.com where there is a whole page of free articles, lots of free videos, and of course my paid courses.